Okay, welcome back to the Sonic the Hedgehog 2006 very hard mode playthrough, ladies and gentlemen. Let's continue on with those questions, shall we? And again, I apologize if I can't read all of these. There's so many of them to begin with, and hopefully I'm, I'm answering a lot of repeats. Uh, well, by that I mean one answering one question will eliminate like 50 other similar questions to begin with. So, uh, with that said... Oh, hey, Blaze, how you doing, first off? Yeah, it's the only time we're going to play is... Uh, you... ah. Anyway... Super Drunk Dragon Ass. Ever think of about doing a drawing live stream? You can take requests from people to draw video games, cartoons, comic book characters, or whatever, and get you to show off your artsy skills! Ooh! <laughs> um, <laughs> a, a live stream just for, like, showing off, like, drawing and stuff like that? Yeah, I know that, that's the thing to do, especially in, like, uh, deviant art and uh, similar places like that. I don't know, though. I don't, I don't exactly feel comfortable with people over my shoulder watching me draw, so a live stream with that I think would be like that times 10, only I can't see them watching me. <laughs> you know, uh, but just for the... I mean, I suppose one day, just for the shits and giggles of it all, I could do it, but I don't even know... I, yeah, I guess I would just have to take requests because I, I don't even know what the hell I would draw. But, uh, eh, maybe one day. Uh, assuming I can get all the kinks worked out with screen capturing software when it comes to uh, XSplit and stuff like that, because that's what I use for last year, it's XSplit. Anyway, Master10555, if you could deck one person in the face and get away with it scot-free, who would you punch and why? Uh... <laughs> I can't just name one person, but if I could, if I had one person that represented a collective bunch, I would say the IRS. <laughs> just punch it in the face and get the hell out of there. I would still gotta pay taxes though. <laughs> That's the bitch of it all. You can't escape death and you can't escape taxes, ladies and gentlemen. Solid Awesomeness has asked, Have you ever heard or have played Dark Cloud? I've heard of it, never played it. It's a PS2 game, if I recall correctly. Uh... And that, and if recall, the face of that guy in the cover was always staring at me every goddamn time I went to a blockbuster video or Hollywood video, you know, for when I'm renting games. But I have never had the curiosity to finally pick it up and play it. I, I don't even remember what you do in the game. Sang Pogo R. Sorry, <laughs> what is it about the Sonic stages in 06 that makes you want to replay them? I, I said this in the Some Call Me Johnny review, but if there's one thing I actually think they did relatively okay with in this game is the level design. It's just the controls and the glitches and the collision detection that just fucks things up. But the level design I actually think is okay. You can remove a few dash panels here and there and jack up Sonic's overall speed, but level design I I think it's okay. To be perfectly honest. I'm I'm completely sincere on that. I keep scrolling up and I see Sonic boom. <laughs> Johnny, with the Kingdom Hearts Reach Hand of Memory scheduled after Link to the Past, let's play, does that mean Kingdom Hearts 2 might be the summer's marathon LP? Uh, well, we're not going to be doing Kingdom Hearts 2 until the 2.5 HD remix comes out because Matt wants to do the final mix version of the game. And we've learned our lesson, ladies and gentlemen. I'm, ugh, it's me and Matt's biggest regret when it comes to Let's Plays. You know, right after we finish the Kingdom Hearts 1 Let's Play, 1.5 HD remix was announced, and we were just furious. I was like, shit, if only we waited longer, we could have done the final mix version of the for the Let's Play. We could have showed you all the extra stuff that Japan players were able to flourish for so long. And now we and now we might come off as redundant because we want to play the final mix version at some point or another. But we have other Kingdom Hearts games to play first. So we're waiting till 2.5 HD Remix to com comes out so that the Kingdom Hearts 2 we'll be playing for the channel will be a final mix. All right, Shiro Zero the Dragoon, what is your opinion on the Disgaea game Ceres, and will you ever do a revu on one of them? I, I don't mean the buster balls like that, dude, but I read what I see. <laughs> uh, the Disgaea series, I know of it. It was actually another series that it was uh, uh, introduced to me from my, uh, my uncle, and you guys know that my uncle is usually uh, the one person that introduced me to a lot of games or series and games that I like and, or enjoy or just absolutely love. Uh, but this guy was one of those that I still have yet to pick up. Um, I know Elliot has the one for the PS3, but I don't remember which one it was. And he told me he liked it. He actually played and beat in the game. So if one of us were ever going to do a Disgaea game for the channel, I suppose it'd be Elliot. 
Uh, any questions uh, concerning the Rechain of Memories playthrough, ladies and gentlemen, will be answered when we start doing Rechain of Memories. So uh, I apologize if I can't exactly answer your question here and there, but, uh, you know, that playthrough is going to be starting relatively soon anyway. So, uh, yeah, best way for it there. Garrus Keeper asks, when you finish the live stream of Final Fantasy VII, would you consider live streaming a WiiWare run of the After Years? WiiWare? <laughs> I have the After Years of the PSP. I could stream that version instead. It's so much better. Yeah, you know, the WiiWare version of After Years looks like a mobile phone game, and it was a mobile phone game, but when they poured it into the WiiWare, they really didn't change that up. So um, if I were to ever do a live stream of the After Years, I'd, you know, of, of yeah, I would do the PSP version. I can do it. It's real easy to do. It's about the same as uh, streaming a 3DS game. And that's one thing I actually do really do want to start getting into, especially after I finish uh, Final Fantasy VII. I want to start live streaming other games and, you know, any other, a lot of other games. You know, it could be Sonic, it could be Zelda, or uh, any other stuff like that. But yeah, the sky's the limit, really. Thomas Steele asks, or Steele E, will you be reviewing the Mega Man X games in due time, obviously. I did the classic series, why the hell would I not do review the X series? King Kizan, Ki, Kienzan, sorry. Who is your favorite video game music composer? And obviously, that's Nobu Matsu. I love that guy's music. I, I, I grew up with that guy's wonderful compositions, and I can't get enough of them. Uh, even it, 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 It's gotten to the point where I would hear about this guy making a video game soundtrack that's not Final Fantasy, and I would buy the game just for the sake of hearing the music. Even though nowadays you can easily listen to a soundtrack just by going on YouTube or something like that. But you know, I, you know, I like to support developers and stuff like that whenever I possibly can, even if I may not, I may or may not enjoy the game. But uh, I love the guy's music, and uh, it's not just Nobody Wants to. I'm also a fan of uh, like uh, Yoko uh, Shimura. Off, off the top of my head, I can't remember all of the names, but and I apologize if I butchered any of them. Uh, she's the one that pretty much composed a lot of the Kingdom Hearts music. She was also in Super Mario RPG. Uh, with that said, um, who, the other girl, uh, Michiru, Michiru, Michiru uh, Yama, Yam, Yamane or something like that. I, again, I'm, I'm so sorry I'm picturing these names. But she's um, responsible for a lot of Castlevania music. I'm a really big fan of her stuff. Uh, and that, that's just on the top of my head. I can go on and on with that sort of thing. Today, Sonic 991 asks, Are you enjoying the Yoshi's Island DLC for Sonic Cross World and the patch that makes the game a little more fun? Fun? <laughs> Quote unquote. <laughs> uh, I appreciate the Yoshi's Island DLC level making lives a complete non issue, and I'm glad the patch, you know, fixes things that should have been there to begin with, like 100 rings giving you an extra lives and stuff like that. But overall, folks, that still doesn't fix some of the other problems I still have with Sonic Lost World, and I'm gonna, I'm just gonna leave it at that. The game's okay; it's not bad. Just approach with caution. We'll have to wait and see w until the Zelda DLC comes out. For, for my overall opinion of Lost World to change, I seriously doubt that, though. Frank Blar Honk asks, "What are your thoughts on Sonic before the sequel and Sonic after the sequel?" I've actually played. A good chunk of before the sequel during a, a haphazard live stream I decided to do out of nowhere. And I like it. It, it kind of drags though, to be perfectly honest. But, you know, it's a fan game. The guy put a, a guy or guys, I'm not sure if it was just one person or not. Or if it's a ladies, I really shouldn't just say guys, people. <laughs> I, I'm not sure if it was just one person or not. But, you know, I did enjoy it. I just think it has a lot of pacing problems. It just... It just seems to go on and on. <laughs> and I never touched after the sequel. I'm not going to after it until I finish before the sequel. Fernando Casado asks, Would you rather have Mega Man X and Smash Brothers 4 rather than Mega Man? Maybe, well, maybe as an assist trophy? No, I'm, I'll be honest, no. Because I just think classic Mega Man is, is just more uh, significant than X. Don't get me wrong, I love the X games. I, I can't get me enough of X1 especially. But when it just comes to significance and... You know, video game history, you gotta go with classic Mega Man. He was there, he was there first. He, he laid the foundation for a lot of uh, uh, games in the series, if not just X and, you know, Zero series and Battle Network. It all started with classic Mega Man, folks, and you gotta remember that. TrueBlade808 asks, What made you buy the DLC of Sonic 06? Let's play. I'm gonna be perfectly honest, let's play. It, it was... If Very Hard Mode was something that was a part of the game itself, very much like how SA2 or Sonic Heroes or Shadow the Hedgehog had Very Hard Mode, stuff like that, I wouldn't be wasting my time. But the fact that it's DLC that you have to pay for it was, was reason enough for me to buy the damn thing and to actually show it off. That is the only reason, ladies and gentlemen. 
Because you remember last year when I did the Team Attack Omega video, I didn't want to do a, a very hard mode for Silver or Shadow entirely because fuck them. <laughs> but, you know, for Let's Play's sake, I suppose, and you guys were probably going to ask me anyway, so I figured, okay, why not? I, I cannot escape the inevitable. I decided to purchase all the DLC, six bucks total. And, well, here we are. <laughs> Joanne Alma Jose, or Alma Jose, <laughs> there's no accent mark, so I'm going to say Alma Jose. What are some other Let's Players or game reviewers that you also watch? Well, when it comes to watching other people... Oh, I guess I could get Let's Players out of the way first. Actually, let me load up my subscriptions. I actually don't watch much of other Let's Players, with a few exceptions here and there. It, it honestly depends. I don't... It wouldn't be accurate to say I constantly keep up with them, but rather I go back to every now and then. Like... When it comes to RPGs, I watch AC Bailey. Uh, when it comes to Nintendo games, I occasionally dip into Chunga Conroy. When it comes to uh, every other things, you know, I I, I watch Kobanarmani four five six uh, uh, from time to time. Um, Nightwing zero one, I uh, dab in every once in a while. And other than that, a lot of my subscriptions are not even the Let's Plays or game reviewers. It's just video entertainment in general, like uh, Team Four Star. Or Honest Trailers or uh, Alpha Omega Sin and uh, Blada Productions whenever he makes something funny with a uh, like source filmmaker and stuff like that. that and Screw Attack, obviously. And uh, for the longest time, I was also a really big watcher of, you know, that guy with the glasses.com. And even then, I still occasionally dabble in their videos every once in a while. But I don't follow pretty much anybody religiously unless, you know, I got the downtime to do so. And I, I didn't even name all the people I actually watched, but I, I could be here forever if, if I do that. So, James Williams asks, why do you make Sonic 06 look playable? Because I played the hell out of it, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and this is just to go into, you know, you guys, uh, I, I, and, I, and, and I appreciate all of the condolences I get for like, you know, Johnny, I feel so bad for you playing this game over and over again. And ladies and gentlemen, it's not, it's not that painful to me, perfectly honest. I, you know, th besides the game being a guilty pleasure, there's a reason why I have, I, I literally really have no problem going back to it. Because it's not that painful for me. The game is shit, but it's, it doesn't, it's not pain inducing shit. It's just shit that you should ignore and play something else instead of going to this game. But when it comes, when you boil down to it, when it comes to the game itself, I played it so many goddamn times that I know what to do now. I know how the levels work. I know how the physics work. You know, the only thing I can't really predict is collision detection. And when things decide to work, then it, you know, all that kind of stuff. Classic Kionis asks, have you ever played the Impossible game? I never heard of the Impossible game, so, uh, no. <laughs> Kevin Caper, how do you do all of your editing and voiceovers in such a small amount of time? Is it a small amount of time? I always thought it took forever. <laughs> well, I mean... I mean, Kevin Caper, when it comes to, you know, doing all this, is, is pretty much my job. And you got to take it very seriously and you got to start cranking it out uh, as often as you can while making sure the quality is still up there. Well, that last part's up to debate, but, <laughs> but uh, you know, I, I take this stuff very seriously and, and you know, I'll do what I can to edit things up and make sure I don't get any more scheduling hookups, especially with SGB. You know, I, I really don't want to have SGB go through a drought anymore. Because I'm tired of that happening, and, and I, I hate it when I can't upload anything for you guys that day because of uh, lack of content. So I, 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 I tend to take things very seriously. <laughs> Molly Brower. That sounds familiar. I think I know her on Facebook. Will you do an LP or review of any Bioshock game? Sooner than you think, actually, because uh, I, I mentioned in uh, Facebook or Twitter that I've actually played Bioshock Infinite. And I actually really enjoyed it. I haven't touched Bioshock 1 or 2 at this point. I'm going to get them in due time. But we also, uh, Elliot, he also downloaded Bioshock Infinite thanks to, like, he, he has a PlayStation Plus subscription on the PS3, which allows him to download games every once in a while, free games every once in a while. And Bioshock Infinite was one of them for some time, and he finally got a chance to play it, and he loved it. So we have two people here that have played Bioshock Infinite. You know, it'd be better, it'd be great if Matt could play it, but, uh, Generally, the rule of thumb is if we all have a game that we absolutely love, we tend to want to let's play it so that we all have something to say about the game. And generally, that's that's the kind of let's play I really look forward to is when all three of us have experience with the game so we can all share our feelings and thoughts and criticisms and 
uh, all that jazz for that game itself. And hopefully Bioshock Infinite will be that in due time. What about Sonic Chronicles? <laughs> Uh, I'm pretty sure if you uh, you guys watch Clement, he did a video recently where he, he pretty much looked at Sonic Chronicles and he he pretty much nailed it on the head, folks. I mean, I reviewed the game myself. That was five years. I was I think it was nearly five years ago. It was one of the first games I ever reviewed uh, on Some Call Me Johnny, and I haven't touched the game since I made that video, folks, because it, it's uh, I still stand by that I think it was a a decent attempt but that's that's as far as i can go decent not great it's not awful just there and of course the soundtrack is disgustingly miserable uh the graphics are very rough around the edges and hmm, that is not a game i would even do for a weekend rpg folks unless you know i'd do it for a live stream maybe just for shits and giggles and that's pretty much where I draw the line. <laughs> Rooney Kalia, what was your most emotional moment, if any, in the Final Fantasy franchise? Uh, you know, at the sake of sounding typical, uh, it was Aerith's death in Final Fantasy VII. You know, because, you know, back in 1997, early 1998, I played the game, I didn't have a guide. Of any sort i was still very new with this whole internet sort of thing uh you know so i didn't know it was coming then I, it happened and then yeah got a little teary-eyed you know didn't want to see her die nowadays you know it's not new and everybody knows about it but uh yeah that's pretty much the most emotional i ever got in a final fantasy game you know four had a lot of death and so did six in some aspects general leo you'll ever be missed but nothing uh, impacted me more than Eris' death. If only because, you know, probably because of the better production values and CG uh, cutscenes and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, but that's off the top of my head. I, I could be missing out on something, but I'll have to go back to that later. Ian Stamberski asks, Why did you stop watching wrestling exactly? Hmm. Well, there was a time starting around 90, late 97, early 98, where I started religiously watching wrestling. It all started with, um, it was a Hell in a Cell match between Undertaker and Big Boss Man. I don't remember if it was a WrestleMania or not, but it ended up with like the Big Boss Man getting hanged. It was all fake, obviously, but you know, I watched that and I was so mesmerized that I decided to, you know, I'm gonna start watching wrestling now, and pretty much the rest is history. I pretty much watched the entire Attitude Era. It was great entertainment for years on end. And then around 2002, I believe, uh, and I, at that point, I was I, I made sure I watched every single pay-per-view event, no matter how big or small. I stayed tuned for every WrestleMania, Royal Rumble especially. And then it was 2002 where I finally missed a pay-per-view event. I think it was King of the Ring, the one in June. And after that, I just stopped. I didn't watch the Raw the following day. I didn't watch that week's SmackDown either. I stopped for one week, and then it just sort of snowballed. I just stopped completely. I actually, uh, r relatively recently, I've got back in some sort of wrestling stink. Uh, it's, when, I, when I'm animating, I like to one of the things I like to do is actually load up old matches from the Attitude Era on YouTube and just listen to it as background noise when I'm working on a project. And that led me to want to watch matches of like of, of recent times, like. I left the WWE, watching it anyway, before the likes of uh, John Cena or Randy Orton or uh, Batista were introduced. And, you know, when when I hear people talking about the WWE, either via social media and stuff like that, that's all I really hear about. So I finally watched some matches with the likes of John Cena and those guys, which led me to, like, like CM Punk and stuff like that. And, you know... I, it's still pretty entertaining, I, I will say that. It's not exactly the same from what I've watched. It's definitely not as edgy as it used to be. For the, cause It has something to do with like WWE being PG rated and stuff like that. But uh, it still makes for good background noise, if I can say that. And uh, who knows? I, I might actually buy this year's WrestleMania 30, if assuming it's not shit. Like this year's Royal Rumble was. I spent money on that. <laughs> 
Uh, Blue Blur 86 CP. When are you getting a PlayStation 4? If you do, if you tell when, will you post a video about it? I actually did recently just buy a PlayStation 4. I, I posted a picture on it on my Facebook. Uh, then I can't blame you if you don't really exactly follow me on Facebook or stuff like that. But yeah, I got the system. It's sitting there right now. Just uh, I got all the proper updates for it, and I bought Tomb Raider, the definitive edition for it. But uh, right now I'm a little too busy to really play the damn thing because uh, I have I have shit to do. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I do have one. Maybe in three years or four years' time, I'll finally get an Xbox One, assuming it has some game that I absolutely must play that I can't get anywhere else. Alexa, Spirit of the Wind. Why do you like Sonic in general as a character and as a game? Uh, Sonic is just someone I've been following for years on, and that's just something you gotta understand. I've been following the guys since 1990. Yeah. It wasn't, it, it wasn't at the very beginning of the Hedgehog's lifespan, because... Uh, the very first Sonic game I ever played was 2. You know, I had to go back to 1 at one point or another. But there was a time in the early 90s to the mid 90s before the PlayStation entered my life where I was nothing but Sonic the Hedgehog. I, you know, I, I, I visited my aunt's house a lot and my cousins had a Sega Genesis. And if it wasn't Streets of Rage 2 or Miss Pac-Man, it was Sonic the Hedgehog. That's all I played. And I just... I fell in love. I, I thought it was so fun. It was bright, colorful graphics. You know, it, it fed my young eyes, and the gameplay was fast-paced, which I loved. And really, the rest is history. I, I, after that, it only took that play. It only took those playthroughs of Sonic Two to really want me to follow up on Sonic the Hedgehog. So I got Sonic Three. Got the 3D games when they came out. I just like Sonic the Hedgehog. I really do. Pedro Ricardo will ask, when will you and Elliot, Matt, and Mark do Super Luigi U or Super Mario 3D World? Whenever we can all meet up together and Mark doesn't have that much, and Mark has a lot of time to kill when he's not when he's not working at the military, because he's a military police officer, or he's military police. So he has to go back to his station, you know, when duty calls and, you know. And if whenever we can finally meet up and record then we will do it but i can't say when we will do it because that's you know that's up to time and when we can schedule it so i i can't give you a date on that it's just whenever we can get to it that's the best answer i can give you legendary boss hunter though just to follow up on the 3d world question john how come you and the bsc crew never did an impressions video on super mario 3d world well in a few months time you might get something a little better i'll leave it at that Pixel Chaos. Thoughts on Lightning Returns? Any hype? Any disappointment? Nothing, actually. I have nothing. <laughs> because I have yet to beat 13. And I have yet to beat 13, too. I have both games, by the way. But I have yet to buy Lightning Returns. And assuming I even like... You know, assuming I beat 13 and I like what I play, and I, I like what I play with 13, too, I may or may not even get Lightning Returns. And Final Form Sonic Penis? What about it? <laughs> you no context on that question, man. Sega Nesquik asks, do you read any of the Sonic stories that exist on fanfiction.net? No, I don't visit fanfiction.net, period, so... Uh, Volzani Solas, I, uh, I think that's how you pronounce your name, anyway. I, uh, how did I meet Matt? This question's, like, really up there on the list, because so I, I know you, you, you asked. It's one of the first questions I saw when I started scrolling down. How did I meet... Well, Matt's a high school friend of mine. We, we met in ninth grade. And we've been friends since. We, um, well, in terms of just how we started talking to each other, we were positioned close to each other. It was it was a math class. And I don't remember how exactly we broke the ice in terms of conversations, but it involved Final Fantasy. I uh, can't remember if it was 9 or 10, but it was one of those two. We just started talking about it, and the rest is history. We've been friends since. But I will begin to answer more questions with part three of the very hard mood with Silver. I'll see you guys tomorrow.